All right, I'm really excited about this last part. This is something new for us, and that is to have a guest speaker. Um, as a football coach, uh, what we often do on the weekends is send each other clips of, of different teams and what they run, and, and you start to garner respect for other coaches and, and what they do with their craft. And, and this is a guy I'm very excited to introduce. Um, his first job was with CSU back in 1987, I believe, and then coached with Oklahoma State. He was part of the national championship team with Michigan. I uh, was part of coaching a team with Charles Woodson, a Heisman winner that year, one of my personal all-time favorite players. Uh, coach for the Chicago Bears, won a national championship at the University of Florida, and then has been a defensive corner at Louisville, and he might like that pennant you now have, Coach Coop, who's a defensive corner at Texas as well. Um, it is a great honor, and I thank you for your patience all night, uh, to introduce Vance Bedford to the stage. I need everybody just to stand up just for a minute, please. You've been sitting for a while, so can you just stand up and just kind of move around? I guess I've, I've been looking around. I've been seeing your eyes a little bit. And parents, just stay standing for me for a minute. First of all, it's an honor for me to be here. I had a chance to watch the players earlier eat pizza, but walking down the hall and to see you there cheering your, your kids on and this team and this coaching staff, this is a place I would love to have had the opportunity to play at. So it's, it's been more of an honor for me to sit here and watch how you relate to each other from the players to the coaches, the coaches to the players and the coaches to the coaches. Then to see the parents, the support that you have here, you are successful, guys. It's not about winning and losing. It's about how you work together, the support that you have, the love that you have for each other. There's a lot of people walking these halls saying, oh, oh, you guys didn't do this, you didn't do that. They not here. Go ahead and have a seat. I think you, you woke up right now. I mean, to play this game is difficult. I set, it, set up in that front row, this is some of the coaches talk about the work ethic, the time you have to get here, to get in the weight room. You have to sacrifice. If you want to be a football player, an athlete, it takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice for these coaches to spend time with you, to be mentors, to be role models, to be leaders. And I'm listening to these coaches get up here and talk. They are trying to prepare you for the rest of your life. It's not just about right here at Fort Collins High School. It's about for you seniors. This is your last go around. How many of you guys can remember when you were a freshman? Time goes really fast, doesn't it? Listen to these coaches tonight. They truly care about you, not just as football players, but as young men, and that's rare. I have high hopes for you guys when you go out and leave this and graduate from this school. I hear about some of you guys going to certain schools from academic scholarships. Man, that's impressive. I wasn't a great student. I didn't like school at all. I graduated. But you know what I had? I had some great coaches that cared about me to help me to develop. Because what I learned about being a football player a long time ago, it was about teamwork. Some of my best friends are still my high school friends. I graduated high school in 1977, so I'm dating myself. And I still go and see those guys, and it was just like yesterday. Football taught me how to work hard. Because to be successful in anything in life, it takes hard work. It takes commitment. But more importantly, it, it takes communication. Being an athlete, and working with a team, you learn how to communicate with each other, to communicate with your teachers, to communicate as you go out into the community and doing community service. You guys just don't know. My wife has gotten me involved. I live in Loveland, Colorado. Every Friday morning, I do my community service. 
we go downtown Loveland at 6 o'clock in the morning and feed the homeless. And it's eye-opening. It makes me take a step back and thank the Lord every day for where I am today. And it's because of football. And you guys have that same opportunity. I thank you special. I thank you successful. For my short time being here and having the opportunity to watch and see how you guys get along and talk to each other and laugh and joke, man, you're successful. The record might say something different, but no. It's not about wins. It's not about losses. It's about what you have learned as a team. The friendships you're going to have for the rest of your lives, guys. I think that's really important. And Coach says it's an honor to have me here and speak. I don't get out and speak too often, to be honest. I'm kind of I'm a retired guy, and I got a call. I say, sure, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I mean, these are young guys, seniors. My hat's off to you. I sat there in 1977. I still remember like it was yesterday. For you underclassmen, time goes really fast. Learn from these guys. You guys still have an opportunity right now to mentor all these young guys in this room. Because what started tonight, the gridiron walk, the walk of champions, you guys are that foundation. You finna make this place special again like it once was. Why? Because of what you did, your parents, the support that you have. You are the foundation to get off board for these guys right here. You should look at these guys and say thank you because this is about you and your future and where you want to go and how you want to build this program because when they leave here, like Coach said, this group will never be together again. They're going to look back and they're going to say, I'm counting on you to keep things going. This is your legacy. You started this. Take credit for it because next year when this team steps out there and win, this, win the conference, it's because of the things that you did. The sacrifices you made, you taught them how to work, how to fight, how not to quit. I listened to the coaches talk in the last ball game. It was a battle, and you know what you guys didn't do? A lot of people with a record where you were, they would have quit. You guys kept fighting. You showed a lot of heart, a lot of commitment, a lot of love and care for each other. That is special. That can never be taken away from anybody sitting in this room. Something to go forward on. Something to build on. I'm going to be looking for you guys next year. I got a team now in Fort Collins I can follow. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys fight. I plan to come to a game and watch you guys. I don't want any excuses. Coach said, get in the weight room. What's holding your back? Why don't you want to be the best? Why don't you want to be great? What's holding you back? What is holding you back from being special? This is the oldest school in Fort Collins, Colorado. The foundation. This football team should be the foundation. You should be leading this, this city right now. People should be looking at Fort Collins High School as not just the best academic school, the best football team in the city and in the state. Why not you? What's holding you back? You are. Only thing holding you back is you. Make that commitment to step out and say, hey, we're going to take this to the next step. Underclassmen, you're going to be sitting there one of these days, one year from now, two years from now. Don't take it for granted where you are. Time goes fast. Like I said, in 1977, I graduated high school, 1977. Sometimes I think, man, I wish I could go back. I had a great time. I enjoy the ride. I enjoy my friends. I call some of my friends, they're like my family right now. We talk all the time, sometimes once or twice a week. Those bonds never go away. You can't get back tomorrow. You got to live for the day. Make today special. I want to challenge you guys this. Start each day, starting tomorrow, with a task or a goal. When I was your age, my mom said, make up the bed. I didn't make up my bed. I was a pretty sorry young man. But when I got in the real world, had my own apartment, and I come home, my bed wasn't made up. I'm like, I, I didn't like this. So now, 
Even though I've been married for 33 years, but before I got married, I made my bed up. Because that was the start of my day. That's the first goal I achieved. Because in life, you have to set goals. So when I came home, whether I had a good day or bad day, I had a bed that was made. I came home and I felt good, no matter what happened, because I accomplished something that day. The little things in life matter. If you don't take care of the little things, it's like little cuts. And they wear you out. And they wear you down. So accomplish something every single day. Find someone to mentor you. I've had a lot of mentors along the way, guys who have guided me. My first job as a football coach was a guy my father coached in high school. He gave him his first job. When I got into coaching, he helped me get my first job. He's been a mentor all my life. I got a friend here in town, Steve Zabo. The reason I got to the University of Michigan in 1995, he called the head coach, said, you have to interview this guy. I didn't, he didn't know me from Adam. But it was up for me to get, to get the job. But he was a mentor and a friend. So find someone, seniors. I'm putting you to the task. Be a mentor to these young guys while you're still here. And when you leave, call and check on them. They're going to need you. Respect everyone. When I was in high school as a junior, I used to be in a work-study program. And some of the wisest guys on campus were the janitors. We had one guy named Reb. He was a pastor. I used to listen to the wisdom that he gave me. And when I became a coach, one of the first people, when I walked into a school to recruit, I'd go talk to the janitor. The janitor know all about you guys. He know you guys don't pick up after yourselves. As he walk in the hall, a lot of times you ignore that person. That person knows everything that goes on to the school. So when I was a recruiter, I'd go find the janitor. He gave me all the information I need. So you need to respect everybody in life because you never know who they are and what they can do for you. And don't compare yourself to other people. I had an opportunity to coach Charles Woodson. He won the Heisman Trophy. First defensive player to do, do that. And I always told Coach Carl, was my boss, let's not compare anybody to him because you're setting the standards way too low. You have no idea how great you can possibly be. So don't compare yourself to what other people think you should be, or how people look at you. Compare, to your, compare yourself to who, who you should be. Reach for the sky all the time. And if you do that, you have the potential to be great one day. And being 65 years old, I've been fired, rehired, retained, fired. Sometimes you're going to get hit in the face. Life is not fair. But the foundation, your parents, your coaches, and the things you learn here, it helps you keep going forward. I've been injured. I've had 70 operations. Knee replacement three years ago. But nothing's ever slowed me down. My senior year in college, injured my knee in the first ball game. You remember those things. Kept moving forward. I kept working. I stayed committed. So sometimes when you get hit in the face, keep moving forward. If your foundation is strong, you're going to be okay in life. But I got this poem I'm going to read. Coach, you told me don't take too long, so I'm not going to take too long. It says, personal accountability. The man in the glass. I'm pretty certain the coach has probably heard this before. When you get what you want in your struggles for self, and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what the man has to say. For it's not your father or mother whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. You may be like Jack Horner and Chisel of Plum and think you're a wonderful guy. But the man in the glass says you're only a bum if you can't look him straight in the eye. He's a fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear to the end, and you pass your most dangerous, difficult tests if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get past on the back as you pass, but your final reward 
would be heartache and tears if he cheated the man in the glass. So every time you get up and you look in that mirror, you can fool a lot of people. But you can't fool yourself. Strive to be different. Strive to be special. Strive to be the best individual you can ever be. When I hear coaches get up here saying, get in the weight room, there's nothing holding you back. You say you want to be all conference, what's holding you back? The man in the glass. You can fool a lot of people, but you can't fool yourself. And lastly, what do you want this team and teammates to be rem remembered for? What I saw tonight, I truly enjoyed myself. I have high hopes for this football team. I think you have a chance to be special next year. If you decide to make that commitment, and I'll challenge you one more thing before I step down. Starting tomorrow, I challenge you in everything you do as young men to give 100% in everything you do. If that means in the classroom, you're giving 100%. If you're in the weight room, you're giving 100%. If mom say take out the trash, you're giving 100%. The next day, give me 100%. If coach said we're supposed to be in the weight room at 6 o'clock, why are you not in there at 545? Give me 100%. And then that grows. It becomes contagious. If you're giving 100% like that, do you know you just became a self-motivator? You have motivated yourself to be special, to take that step above, to be champions. That's what champions are. They give 100%. When nobody's looking, they give 100%. Coach, I really appreciate your time for having me here. I think I've enjoyed this more than anyone in this room, just sitting back, just watching and listening to the coaches talk about the players, vice versa, for the parents. I had chills walking down that hall. This is a special place. Young men, make it really special next year. For you seniors going out, God bless you. Keep moving forward. If you get hit in the face, keep moving forward. The foundation that you learn from coach is in you. Don't let anything stop you. If it's a wall in front of you, that's called adversity, you find a way. Get around it, over it, under it, or through it, and you keep moving forward. Because you're going to make your mom, your dad, Fort Collins High School, very proud. Once again, Coach, thank you. I appreciate your time, and I wish you the best of luck.